I'd just broken up with um with a very horrible guy and I said to my friend I was just like okay you know I haven't I haven't had a I haven't had sex for three months because I couldn't I was so heartbroken I was just like mm, whatever um and she was like I, I said to her I don't want to meet a guy who's going to try and make me fall in love with him I just need some fun for you know a weekend or whatever just to like cheer me up a little bit and I want someone who can make me laugh. And so she's like, ah, I know the perfect guy. Who was the first person to speak to you? Did Russell call you or was it the BBC? Um, well, after the phone call, um, Russell and Jonathan left me a voicemail on my phone immediately. Uh, it was Russell saying, oh, uh, I've just uh, left a voicemail on your granddad's phone. Uh, I think you should break into his house and like... Um, destroy his answering machine or something like that because um yeah because they'd left a message and he he was like i'll promote the satanic sluts like to uh, to make up for it how much of your life did your granddad or your parents know about before i don't think they knew anything about drugs and they didn't know anything about um like pornographic stuff or dominatrix work or um what else did i do <laughs> <laughs> i think that's it and now they know everything. Yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> you said that at the beginning you were too embarrassed to call your grandfather. Yeah, of course, yeah. Has that changed? Have you spoken since? Um, well, okay, so after the um, Russell and Russ stuff happened, you know, that wasn't my fault, so we talked about that, that was fine. But then it's interesting because all these papers that say they, they love my granddad and support my granddad, they print all this crap about me. They, they printed all this stuff that I did two years ago when I was 21 and a bit of an idiot. You know, I was trying to live independently and anyway, I did some like modeling jobs and I was sort of trying to discover myself as a performer and what I was okay with and what I wasn't okay with. And I was basically just growing up. I know that I'm not that person anymore. Um, and I think that people shouldn't say they, su they support my granddad or they love my granddad and then talk crap about me. What have you learnt from everything that's happened? Don't sleep with celebrities, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Is there a tiny bit of you that's enjoying the notoriety? Like, I think, for example, I did a shoot with Zoo magazine, which is a lads magazine, and they never would have booked me before because I'm not a size eight and you know, I, I wasn't who I was. And I've always wanted to do, like, lads mags, and I've always wanted to do kind of presenting stuff, which I used to do on the show that I used to have. And I never would have had opportunities like this if this hadn't happened. So I'd kind of, you know, I'd kind of be an idiot if I said, oh, I wish it never happened, because, you know, good stuff's come out of this for me. But why do you want to appear in Zoo? I want to represent girls that are bigger than a size eight. You know, because when, when I was a young girl and I, you know, I, I looked at the front covers of stuff like Zoo or, or FHM or stuff like that, it was always skinny little little girls that have been angled and lit in a way to make them look curvier. And I just think it's ridiculous and it's setting an unhealthy body image for young women. And I'm a size 12. I'm happy to be a size 12. And... I think there's not really many girls out there at the moment who kind of represent curvier women properly. Can't you represent curvier women by being a lawyer or like why? Why do you want to? I've why never do really you been interested like... in being a lawyer. Right. I'm an exhibitionist person. Uh, it's just part of my personality. If people want to call me a a whore or um, you know distasteful or whatever, that's their opinion. I respect their opinion, but it's not my opinion. And at the end of the day, I'm stuck with me forever. I'm happy with what I do. If other people aren't happy with what I do, quite frankly, they can screw themselves.